the last few days have been very, very cold. Nights around zero degrees Fahrenheit and days also below 20. So it's not just the water that keeps freezing, the food as well. Since I'm now giving them a fermented food that is like a mess. They do still like to wander around. So I have two bowls of every kind of food and once one bowl is frozen, I change it for the other one. Well, this one thaws. Right now it's still, it's still okay. I've always fed wild birds, even before we had chickens. And now both the chickens and the wild birds can eat that scratch and black oil sunflower seeds we'll have one more really cold night one degrees fahrenheit but then tomorrow it should go up and everything will get a little easier for snack i've given them a lot of dried mealworms and a lot of dried crickets as well which they really like even better than dried mealworms and i've given them some pieces of bark from the wood that we're burning which they love to peck at but for now i think they're happy to just stay in the run This is probably the first day since the chickens lived in their coop that they have not gone outside almost the entire day. I think they didn't go any further than those water bowls. We call this kind of weather a northeaster. The wind's coming from the northeast, or supposed to, seems to be coming from everywhere. And they are not in the coop. They are under the coop. Hold on. Here they are, all of them. It's pretty dry down there, I guess. We got maybe 15 inches of snow the other day and now there's really very little left to do for these adventurers. Even though we've snow blowed and shoveled some space for them to walk in, they kept wandering into the road. I don't know who really was the culprit, Maggie or the chickens, but they always ended up in the road. This road is generally quiet, but at rush hour when people go to work or come back from work, they do go fast. And sometimes even during the day, trucks come by that go pretty fast. So this morning I rigged a solution. We use this no shock hand pen last summer when they were little. Hopefully this will keep them from going into the road. In the long run, I think we'll need some serious fencing. I think we're going to build a fence that goes around the parking spot, around the driveway, so they will be able to go anywhere except for in the driveway. Had to scrape this out with a hoe. There's a layer of ice underneath everything now. The icicles are growing a little longer every day.
Hey, lovey dovies. Hey, honeys. I guess sawdust is better than nothing. I give them grit, I give them oyster shell. Yet still what they want is this. What they mostly want is this. Here's the result of one day of scratching in the snow and ice. Maybe it's just grit. But it has a lot of appeal. see where they are when you can't find them when you think all the chickens have been eaten by a fox or a hawk or an eagle but here they are they found themselves a cave and smart chickies smart smart honeys flat stone where I used to put food for the wild birds now, there you go. Who needs a coop? In February, the stream behind our house is completely frozen and snow covered, and it's never very deep. It's not a perennial stream. So there's no way to get water from here. All the water for the chickens and their guard goose comes in buckets, carried in buckets from the bathroom in our house. Tastes good, huh? When we have a number of below 10 degrees Fahrenheit nights, we run two space heaters under the plumbing in the basement to keep the lines from freezing. This one is actually strapped to a pipe next to the door, which is normally closed the whole time. And this is a fancier one that you can set to frost watch here in this corner below the dream pipe near a window. And it's worth it because we have had our pipes freeze in the past. We mainly use wood heat to heat our house and the pipes will freeze. Now that we have these birds who want water first thing in the morning and all day long, I don't want to take any chances. 
just in case we lose power and our water pump that pumps up water from the well doesn't work I fill up two buckets with water the night before and, and just have them ready in case. Before I had Maggie, I researched raising geese. I watched YouTube videos and the first video I hit on was by a beginning farmer and you see him pulling buckets of water for his flock of geese, bucket after bucket of water in midwinter. So I knew what I was letting myself in for. I'll post a link to that video below. I've actually been following that channel ever since. In any case, geese need a lot more water than the shallow poultry waterer that is all right for chickens. Even if I would not have researched that beforehand, I would have learned this from Maggie's behavior around water. As long as this trickle doesn't completely freeze, I might be able to get some water for the birds from here. Don't know how clean it is. But after heavy snowfall or a zero degree night, that's also really not an option. And even when there are no problems with the water supply, watering the birds in winter means hauling buckets up and down those steps from the bathroom, filling them in the bathtub several times a day when it freezes hard, really almost every hour or two. So I'm really anxious to come up with a better way of getting water to the chickens and goose in winter. I'm hoping we'll be able to dig a trench from the basement below the frost line all the way to the coop and install a hydrant and I'll keep, keep you updated on that project.